What's up my pre-calc people, Michael Princhak here, ready to talk about transformations, topic 1.12 out of AP Pre-Calculus. In this video, we're gonna focus on horizontal dilations. So if we have a function g of x, and that function is defined as f of b times x. So we, inside of our function, we have something times x. Genetically, we're just calling it b. This is a sign of what we call a multiplicative transformation because we're multiplying our function in some shape or form by a value. But if that value that we're multiplying by is happening inside of our function, b times x inside the f of our function, then we have what's known as a horizontal dilation. Now this is going to stretch or compress us horizontally, but here's the trick, it's going to stretch or compress us horizontally by a factor of one over b. 1 over b. Actually, it's the absolute value of 1 over b because if b is also negative, the negative is simply a reflection across the y-axis. And when you reflect across the y-axis, your y values actually stay the same. It's your x values that reflect. So again, a horizontal translation is when you have a point x comma y and we're going to multiply the inside, we're going to multiply on the inside, we're going to multiply our inputs by b. Now what that actually does to our function is it multiplies those inputs by a factor of 1 over b. So if our b value is greater than 1, the function is horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 over b. So if you have a b value of say 3, you're going to multiply all of your inputs by 1 over 3 or 1 third. That's going to shrink or compress you horizontally. If your b value is between 0 and 1, uh, let's just say 1 half for example, then that's going to stretch you by a factor of 1 over b. Now you might be like, well wait a minute, you just said 1 over b. Yes, but think about it. If my b value is a fraction like 1 half, 1 divided by 1 half actually takes that 1 half and it reciprocates it to a 2. That is why when your b value is between 1 and 0, it's actually going to be a stretch because it's going to multiply you by the reciprocal and the reciprocal of 1 half is going to be 2. So it's actually going to stretch you out wider. So again, just keep in mind the input value is going to be multiplied by 1 over b no matter what. But if that b value is a fraction, then that fraction is going to get reciprocated and it's going to actually be a stretch. And that's if your b value is between 0 and 1. Now, if your b value is negative, keep in mind you still have that horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 over b. That is not changing whatsoever. But you also have a reflection across the y-axis. And again, keep in mind when a point is reflected across the y-axis, the x value is opposite and the y value actually just stays the same. All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples that involve these horizontal dilations. All right, now horizontal stretches and compressions, these horizontal dilations can be really tricky since these examples are going to really help, so let's go nice and slow. The function f is defined as x squared minus 7. If this function were to have a horizontal dilation by a factor of 2, what is the new function? All right, so let's first process that factor of 2. So you got to remember, if you are multiplying inside of your function by b, that means that you are multiplying by a factor of 1 over b. Okay, so if I have a factor of 2, if that's what my factor is, right, then that means my b value must have been 1 half. Because if this is equal, if 1 over b is equal to 2, that means my b must have been 1 half, because 1 divided by 1 half is what equals that factor of 2. And this means that I'm going to have a stretch. This is going to be a horizontal stretch. So again, this is happening inside my function. So it's inside on the x value, I'm going to be multiplying by 1 half. That's where my b value goes. It gets inside the function. So that's going to be 1 half x squared. Notice the 1 half is multiplied by x inside of that parent function of x squared minus 7. So we have a 1 fourth x squared minus 7 as my new function. This is my new function right here after this horizontal stretch. Now, Again, I'm multiplying by 2. That's why I'm stretching. Multiplying by 2 is going to make you bigger. That's going to stretch you out. But again, it's opposite of how you see that in the function. That means your b value is 1 half. And again, it's all because when your b value is being multiplied inside your function, you have that horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 over b. 
And again, the kind of cool thing is I can see a quick graph of this as well. So right here is the original function x squared minus seven. And after this horizontal stretch, again, multiplying the inside by one half, which creates that one fourth x squared minus seven. Notice that I get this blue function that you should clearly see is horizontally stretched out. It's, it's wider, right? Which means it has that stretch. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Now, the next example actually starts off with the exact same function, x squared minus seven, but this time we have a horizontal dilation by a factor of one third. So once again, remember, your B value tells you that you have that factor of one over B. Okay, so if my factor I'm multiplying by is one third, then that means my B value must have been three because you multiply by one over B. So if my B value is three and I multiply by one over B, that means I'm gonna multiply by one over three, so that's why my factor is one third. So this means that I have a vertical, or excuse me, not a vertical, a horizontal compression a shrinking or a compression. Again, my B value is three, but that means my factor is one third. And if you're multiplying by a factor of one third, you're going to compress or shrink. So my new function is going to be taking the old function and multiplying by one, or excuse me, multiplying by three. So sorry, I did that. Your B values, which you multiply by, just determined my B value is three. So I'm gonna multiply by three inside of my function. So once again, that happens inside the function. So it's 3x all squared minus 7, and that's going to result in 9x squared minus 7 as my new function. And again, I can take a look at the graph of this one as well. So there's the original function, x squared minus 7. And if I add the second function that has been multiplied by a b value of 3, which is actually a factor of 1 third, hopefully that all makes sense, notice that I'm multiplying by 1 third, and that actually creates that compression. So again, the, the red function was the original function. The black one is now more compressed horizontally. So hopefully that makes sense. I know it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm trying to go nice and slow here. So what you're multiplying by, if it's one third, that's going to compress you. If it's, if it's a positive three, that's going to make you wider. It's going to stretch you out. But again, your B value isn't exactly that. Your B value is going to be the, the fraction of that. So you got to be really careful with that. That's why I always like to think about this idea right here. My B value means that I'm going to multiply by a factor of one over B. Okay, so if my factor is one over three, that means my B value must have been three. And a factor of one, three is going to actually compress me. So take your time to process all that. I know it's kind of a lot, uh, but be very careful with that, especially with these horizontal dilations. All right, so here we have a parent function g of x equals the square root of x. It's being transformed by the rule one fourth x write the new transformed function, and is it being horizontally stretched or compressed? All right, so I have a B value of one-fourth. So that means I'm going to multiply by a factor of one over B. So if I take one over one-fourth, I get a four. So I'm actually multiplying by four, so that's going to horizontally stretch me, right? So, but that doesn't change the fact that my B value is one fourth, but remember it's, it's, it's the reciprocal. Okay, so what is my new function gonna look like? Well, my new function G of X is going to be simply multiplying the inside by one fourth. So I have to multiply the inside by one fourth. So that's the square root of one fourth X. And you can actually clean that up. That's going to be the square root of one fourth is one half. The x is still inside the square root. So we can actually rewrite that as the square root of x over 2. Hopefully that all made sense to you. All right, because again, it's happening inside of that parent function. So a lot going on here. So this is going to be a, um, a not a compression, excuse me, a stretch because I'm multiplying by a factor of 4 that's going to make me stretched out and doesn't take away from the fact that my original b value was 1 fourth because you multiply by the factor of the reciprocal. Again, tricky. Take your time, process everything I'm saying, rewatch if you need to. All right, here's another one. Uh, let g be a function that is transformed of a function f such that g of x equals f of negative 2x plus 3. Describe the transformations of the function that result in function g. All right, so if I'm going to describe these transformations, I'm going to start inside the function. I'm multiplying by 2. So my b value is 2. That means this is going to be a horizontal dilation
and um, I'm multiplying by one half. My B value is two, so it's by a factor. Again, messy handwriting, I'm sorry, by a factor of one half. So that's going to be a compression or a shrink horizontally. And then I also have this negative sign here. Really important that you see that negative sign right there. So a negative sign inside your function doesn't change that horizontal dilation by a factor of one half, but that is going to be a reflection across the y axis. So my x is, say my x was two, now it's going to become a negative two. And if your x is switching across the y axis, your, your y doesn't change at all. Your x coordinate is going to become opposite. If you were positive or negative, if you're negative, you're now positive. All right, the last thing I notice is this plus three right here. Now that's happening outside the function, so we gotta remember back. That's actually gonna be a vertical translation up three. So that's happening outside the function. So that's going to affect my Y values are going to go up three, not going to affect my X values. All right, last problem here. So consider the graph of the function below, kind of a graph made up of a couple different uh, lines there. And it says the graph of uh, F of X is horizontally stretched by a factor of two. What is the B value going to be? So again, if I'm stretching by a factor of two, that means I'm multiplying by two, that means my B value must have actually been one half. So my B value is one half, and the factor that you multiply by is one over B, which is why I got a factor of two there. Now the next part says there are four points identified with dots, and let's actually quickly identify them. So the first one we have is negative four, negative two. Then we have negative one, one. Then we have two comma one. And then we have three comma three. What are the new four points and the horizontal stretch or, or after the horizontal stretch? Okay, so we're stretching by a factor of two. So we're multiplying our X's by two. So my new points are gonna be simply multiplying my X's by two. So that's gonna be negative eight comma negative two. Remember with a horizontal stretch does not affect your Y values at all. Negative two comma one, again multiplying the X's by two, four comma one, and then three times two, six comma three. And I can actually graph these points. So negative eight comma negative two would be right here. And negative two comma one would be right here. Sorry, that first point disappeared. Uh, four comma one would be right here. And then six comma three would be right here. So we see how the graph got horizontally stretched. If you kind of look at that green graph now, you see how it got horizontally stretched. Vertically didn't really change at all. And the, the range is still the same. The range is negative two to three, but the domain got stretched by a factor of two but that means my original B value must have been one half. So there's a lot to take in here, kind of tricky, but hopefully this is a nice simple example so you can literally see the stretch horizontally by a factor of two. But again, that just simply means that your B value inside the function must have been a half. All right, not too bad there. Hopefully these examples really helped, but watch them again if you need to. It could just be a little bit tricky with these horizontal dilations, so just take your time to process it. All right, that's it for horizontal dilations. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Can be a little bit tricky here and there, but hopefully the examples were enough to kind of show you what can happen in these different situations. Just keep in mind, if there is a negative being multiplied by your X inside, that is still a dilation, but it's also going to be that reflection across the Y axis, taking you from here over to here. All right, that's it. There's plenty more transformation videos out of topic 1.12. Hopefully you enjoy them. See you later.